Hey, what's up, guys? The boy OG Black. Smash, like, subscribe. Don't forget my Patreon is open. My PayPal and my Cash App is open at OG Black Show. That's a dollar sign, OG Black Show 13. That's the Cash App, guys. The story I'm going to be bringing you guys today is about Rigoberto Campos. Now, a lot of people know this name and ask me, who is Rigoberto Campos? And OG Black's going to get into it. The reason why I bring this guy up is because the situation in Mexico. Now, at one time, so you guys know, El Chapo Guzman, El Mayo Zambada, and El Huero Palma all lived in Tijuana. All lived in Tijuana. I said before that the Palmas live in Tijuana. A lot of people are like, no, they don't. How could that happen? The Ariano Felix is in them. You know, guys, if that's a whole other story I can get into. Now, the guy I'm going to talk about today is Rigoberto Campos. Now, some of you guys know him from your co the Corrido from Chalino Sanchez. Some of you guys know him from a little bit of the history, and I'm going to get into it. Rigoberto Campos is someone who was disliked by many, but loved by few. The reason why I say it like that is because he was a man who was an innovator. He was a man that a lot of people believe worked both fences of the side, kind of like the Señor Mayo Zambada. A lot of people say, how has El Señor El Mayo been around for so long? Well, guys, having a good relationship with the DEA agents, with the FBI and the United States government, is not a simple thing. You know, Rigoberto Campos is someone who's learned how to use the Tijuana Quarter or the Tijuana Crossing as, as his way of making millions and millions of dollars back in the 80s. Um, Rigoberto Campos in the 80s and 90s was a man who was rich by all means. He was a drug trafficker who, who paid no respect to, to anybody's plaza. He brought in drugs through Mexicali, through Tijuana, through Ensenada, and through Tetecate. People we'll say, hey, OG Black, how do you know so much about Rigoberto Campos? Well, besides being one of my most interesting stories that I ever thought of, thinking that he's one of the most interesting stories that I can think of, I meant to say. You know, he's one of the most um, clouded in mystery, and I'll tell you why. There is a lady in Tijuana, and she was a nun. I'm not going to say her name because I think that if you guys found out her name and stuff, it would kind of give you a lot of mixed conceptions about what was going on. This nun was a person who frequent the jails. This is a nun who um, liked to go and visit the poor people, the prisoners who had no families. Uh, Rigoberto Campos was in a prison in Tijuana. That's where a lot of people think that he met Chalino Sanchez or Chalino Sanchez knew a lot about him from there. Um, Rigoberto Campos was a man who lost both of his arms. Now, there's two stories behind that. One of the stories is that Rigoberto Campos had his arms cut off by the, Ari by the Ariano Felix uh, family. A lot of people say that he lost his arms in an accident in the wood chipper. Um, a lot of people have a lot of theories about him. Um, some people say he was a DE agent. Some people say that he was a, um, person who worked for the, for the United States government and also worked for his own cartel. It makes sense, guys, a lot of times, because if you think about it, Rigoberto Campos passed drugs through Mexicali and through Tijuana with no impunity, with no problem. Um, he didn't pay any plaza because he didn't believe in paying boss, plaza to any plaza bosses. Which the guys in, in Tijuana, um, the guys from Sinaloa, the guys from other places, took it as a very much respect. So one day, El Chapo Guzman, El Mayo Zambada, and El Huero Palma, who were all living in Tijuana, guys, got together one day. And decided what would be the fate of Rigoberto Campos. Now... A lot of people say the faith of Rigoberto Campos was his addiction to his horse races. Now, if you guys have ever been to Tijuana or Juarez, there's two things they love in Tijuana and Juarez. That's cockfighting and horse races. Now, um, Rigoberto Campos was challenged to a horse race of a million dollars per entry, which he accepted. He went down to one of the biggest horse racing places in Tijuana that they had at that time was El Matamoros. Was El Matamoros, which was considered the, 
the Los Alamitos racetrack of, of, of horses in Tijuana. It wasn't the Kentucky Derby, but it was pretty damn close. So Rigoberto Campos at that time was always a heavily guarded. He was always full of sicarios, two or three carfuls, they said at a time. But he felt pretty safe in Tijuana because that was his backyard and he knew what was going on. And he thought by paying off the cops and, and having some people in his pocket, he was safe. The problem with it was that he was set up by the Sinaloa cartel, whether it be Huero Palma, Chapo Guzman, or Lyle Zambada, who signed off his death certificate. Only them and God will know. But at the end, Rigoberto Campos was trapped leaving the horse races. Now I'm going to tell you what happened. A lot of stories is that Rigoberto Campos was slumped over and dead. A lot of people who were eyewitnesses, they saw Rigoberto Campos leaving in the Grand Marquis. And a lot of people say that he looked like he was asleep. From my understanding, Rigoberto Campos was asleep when he was killed. He was in the back seat and he was with one, one of his bodyguards, which is pretty weird. Um, I think he felt he was pretty safe. He thought by taking the back route home that no one was going to find him, but it was wrong. The Sinaloa Pistoleros were waiting for him. As he passed the avenue called Insurgentes in Matamoros, there's a four-way stop there that's legendary. As soon as he stopped there, street gunmen opened fire from both angles, killing Rigoberto Campos in the back seat with his bodyguard and killing a little girl across the street. You know, guys, your boy OG Black is bringing you this, guys, because a lot of people don't talk about him, Rigoberto Campos. He's a very famous person. His corridos are known. He's a person who's lasted the, 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 the sands of time because there's so much stuff clouded in mystery about him. You know, the DEA, the FBI, you know, said that he was an informant. There's no proof, guys, but you never know. It's your boy, OG Black. Smash, like, subscribe. I hope you guys like this story about Rigoberto Campos. I've been asked a lot about it by certain people. That's why I brought it out, and I think you guys all should hear it. If you guys haven't heard the Corrido by Chalino Sanchez and Rigoberto Campos, I think it's one of the best corridos out there. I think by all means you guys should hear it. If you haven't, I think that if you heard it, you would say, hey, you know what? You would say, hey, you know what? This is a great song, OG Black. Um, Chalino Sanchez sings it. Um, I think it's one of the best ones. And I'm going to leave you guys with the corrido for Rigoberto Campos. Where Chalino Sanchez talks about how he was found with his arms dead. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's your boy OG Black, and I'm out. Here you guys go. Great song. En un carro gran marquis iba Rigoberto Campos en otro sudor de espalda que lo venían escoltando. So you guys can see the video. I'm going to show you. De grandes del contrabando. Los cuernos de chivo comenzaron a tirar, matando a Rigo al instante y a su guardia personal, hiriendo a gente inocente que cruzaba el boulevard. Dicen que había estado preso. Por ser narcotraficante Y a los meses que salió Lo hallaron lleno de sangre Le habían cortado los brazos Por orden de un contrincante All right, guys, your boy OG Black. Smash, like, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Hug your loved ones, and I'm out.